Run! 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 <laughs> All right, guys, I'm super excited about throwing out an extra video this week. We're going to go into some water jetting, why wings have twists, what that's for, make a couple tables, get started on these wings. So I'm super pumped about that. I also want to give a quick shout out. Thank you for all of you who send me letters, guests, Dave. This is absolutely awesome. I really appreciate it. I love our aviation family and all of you that support me along the way. You're the best. And I am so excited about the video that's coming Saturday. I know I'm doing one now. A couple days from now, you'll get Saturday. It is the video I am most excited about. It's something I've been hiding and keeping out of clips all the way along the way. And some of you caught it, some of you noticed, some of you have been guessing what it is, but the black tape hiding the three secret switches in Scrappy and what they do is coming in just a couple days from now. So I love you guys, you guys know the drill. Back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. I'm gonna make a quick table. Have a bunch of spare spars because of the minimum order, so this is gonna be my wing table. All right, guys, so here's what we're gonna do next. I had all the extra spars because there was a minimum order I had to do to get my custom spars extruded. Large orders uh, to avoid suspicion. Well, at least we'll have spares. Yes. And so I've been cutting them up right here. These are now going to be the ribs or supports for a two tables. You can see I'm starting to build them right here. I'm gonna laser cut them so that they notch around this and slide on and it locks them together. That way I have two wing tables. These are 20 foot long tables a piece, but I can literally, when I'm done, slide all these off, stack it up, and the tables are put away till the next build. So right now I've got this, these frames anchored to the floor and it looks, it's just duct tape, but I cleaned it first and anchored them down and they're not going anywhere. So I set a straight line I've got it all the way down for both wings so I can run them side by side and assemble it together. But the most important thing I've got to do now is get out my laser and I've got a very accurate laser. I'm gonna dim the lights in here, it sets a red line. And I'm gonna laser set both the wings perfectly straight from end to end. But now that I've got all the shims in and I've got it perfectly set, I'm gonna lift my spars out, my, my table spars, and now I'm gonna put tape down to hold these sticks in place. Now, I actually shim this with sticks to make a nice solid surface, and then I use tape to layer up to get it absolutely perfect because the stick thicknesses are too far off. I want it absolutely perfect. So once I got the sticks close, then I went back through and I added layers of tape and each layer of tape until every point was perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and lift these out add tape to tape the sticks and everything moving, but I'm just gonna add one piece to every single one so they all come up evenly. A lot of times people will start with a flat table and they'll put the wing on it, and then they'll twist the wing with a block to get its washout. The washout meaning just the tips being tipped forward so they stall last and you maintain aileron control. If you get too much washout, you're gonna cause the plane to fly much slower at the top end, meaning your plane's not gonna be as fast because you're fighting two different angles on the wing. So if you twist it too much, it would make for a bit safer because you're gonna fill the sink out a little bit longer than, and your ailerons will still be flying. But that's a fine balance because you can quickly lose 10 knots on your aircraft and you're just adding more washout than is necessary. I fortunately have a little bit of an advantage because I'm making a table specifically for my wings. I built that all so that I put the twist in my table. The reason I'm putting the twist in my table is because I'm gonna do a aluminum skinned wing. The entire wing, wing will be aluminum skinned. Come on, come on. For various reasons I'll get into later. No mom, you don't understand. I've been waiting for this thing to come out for months, and now, every day time is slowing down. 
It's like waiting for Christmas times a thousand. But once I twist the whole table, I can put the skin on the table. It starts out twisted. I can put all my ribs on the table and they will all individually twist correctly from a high twist to no twist at the other end. And no matter what I'm doing or where I put pressure, nothing's flexing, nothing's moving. It stays absolutely perfectly true. So there's another advantage to this table design that I'm really excited to be able to use on this one because I've done it harder ways in the past. But that's that my table ribs, this part right here that's gonna slide on, my table ribs can slide up and down the length of my table spars. The reason for that is because I want to be able to get underneath the wing to put in all the rivets. And no matter what you try and do, there's always gonna be one of your table blocks in your way to get underneath to your skin, to be able to buck your rivets in your wing. So I've got all of these slidable, and at any point I can grab one and slide it out of my way from under the table and work and slide it back. But anytime I'm sliding it or moving it, the table is not, the actual rib is moving with the twist of the wing no matter where I place it. And the wing itself is sitting on an absolutely perfect hard surface the whole way down. And no matter what I'm doing, I don't risk sagging or bowing or anything else. So I did a little trick, a simple math. I quickly calculated out what it takes to get my seven tenths of a degree twist I want and then how many stands it would take. It, I just I had three stands and I, I quickly figured out I just wanna go buy one more. It just made getting the twist a lot easier and also making sure that the distance between them has absolutely no flex whatsoever while I'm working on it. And what it does by adding four stands instead of two or three is that my twist is exactly three eighths of an inch at this end and I want none at that end. So with four stands, I can actually use paint sticks. Paint sticks are exactly an eighth of an inch. So to get three eighths inch higher on this end, since I leveled it with a laser first everywhere, I pulled out the rear side and then I added three paint sticks to this one, raised it three eighths. The next one is exactly two paint sticks, raised it a quarter inch. The next one, one paint stick is another eighth and then the end goes to zero. So it just makes it easy to do a true laser surface set, then lift the back side of the table. Three sticks, two sticks, one stick, no stick. This table is as true as I can possibly get it. I lost Ron a long time ago, and uh, he's a superstar. He stays late with me all the time. Tonight, I just, I really wanted to get this table done. So I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna start sliding the table together and getting it ready because as soon as this table's done, I can start assembling a wing. Eric, you're just going to have to be patient. Yeah! Yeah! You guys know the drill. <laughs> Let's get back to work. All right guys, so I couldn't help it. These are the leftover, the extra spars I had because I had to do a minimum order. So I went ahead and put orange sticker on this one and laser cut out scrappy and the tracks to make my table. And I did a couple extra so I could do a backdrop. So my tables will be labeled. So I don't know, <laughs> I couldn't help it. Let's get back to work.
All right, I'm down to just a couple pieces left. I'll show you where these go. I don't want that corner killer right here. So I've got this all trimmed up. The top, it looks nice, but that edge will get you. So this goes here, so I can rivet this to the main frame. Everything's tight, clean. I'll double and sand these edges off, so I got a nice, strong, safe corner. Um, I've got to screw the top down still, so if you push this down, it goes flush. But I actually don't want a metal edge here. I want to take uh, wood over the top. So what I did on all my tables I've built in here, they have at least two, sometimes three layers of three quarter inch. And the top layer is the really fine, perfectly smooth top. I can router the edge, make it nice to work on so it doesn't have a hard line. And then I can beat the crap out of that table because I like to be able to just go as fast as possible and never slow down. So I don't want to worry about drilling a hole in the table or if I sand against something or I gotta spray paint something. I want the project to be really, really fast. So the top layer that will go on top of this and overhang this metal edge a little bit is a sacrificial top. And a year or two or whenever, a couple years down the road, when the table's got a thousand holes in it and all beat up, I can unscrew the countersunk heads of the screws, no nails, pull it off, reskin it, and I have a brand new table I can beat up against. I just thought of doing this right while I was building the wing tables. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna have parts up and down and I don't wanna be chasing all over the shop. And I had just miscellaneous crap along here. So I thought the best thing I can do it's just spend part of a day, quickly knock out a new bench. I got a few things left to do. Right now it's just temporarily held up with a couple of kickers. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna get my laser out. I'm gonna set this uh, laser set by putting a few more kickers and shims until I get it absolutely spot on the entire length. Then I'll go ahead and do 45 kickers down and then I'll do shelves underneath it. So I got shelves the whole length of this table. That's about it, of course. Scrappy's main spare spars. Couldn't help but build it with Scrappy spars. I had them kicking around. I'm super excited. This is literally the tail end of everything I need to start building my wings right here with every tool ready to go. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Yes! Couldn't be happier. Simple partial day project is gonna save me days on the wing build, so it's worth it. Get on with it. You guys know the drill. Back to work.